divine liturgy is the Eucharistic service of the Byzantine tradition of Christian liturgy. As such, it is used in the Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic Churches. Armenian Christians, both of the Armenian Apostolic Church and of the Armenian Catholic Church, use the same term. Some Oriental Orthodox employ the term holy offering for their Eucharistic liturgies instead. The term is sometimes applied also to Roman Rite Eucharistic liturgies, though the term Mass is more commonly used there. In Eastern traditions, those of the Eastern Catholic and Orthodox churches, the Divine Liturgy is seen as transcending time and the world. All believers are believed to be united in worship in the Kingdom of God along with departed saints and the celestial angels. To this end, everything in the liturgy is seen as symbolic, yet also not just merely symbolic, but making the unseen reality manifest. According to Eastern tradition and belief, the liturgy's roots go back to Jewish worship and the adaptation of Jewish worship by early Christians. This can be seen in the first parts of the liturgy that is termed the Liturgy of the Word, that includes reading of scriptures and the sermon, homily. The latter half was believed to be added based on the Last Supper and the first Eucharistic celebrations by early Christians. Eastern Christians participating in the liturgy also traditionally believe that the Eucharist is the central part of the service, as they believe it truly becomes the real body and blood of Christ, and through their partaking of it, they see themselves as together becoming the body of Christ. Each liturgy has its differences from others, but most are very similar to each other with adaptations based on tradition, purpose, culture and theology. Byzantine Rite There are three divine liturgies in the Byzantine Rite that are in common use in the Eastern Orthodox Church and Byzantine Catholic Churches. The Divine Liturgy of Saint John Chrysostom, used on most days of the year, and is a Vesperal Liturgy on the Annunciation. The Divine Liturgy of Saint Basil the Great, used on the five Sundays of Great Lent and on Saint Basil's Feast Day, on the eves of the Nativity and Theophany, and on Holy Thursday and Holy Saturday, it is celebrated as a Vesperal Liturgy. In some traditions, Saint Basil's Liturgy is also celebrated on the Exaltation of the Life-Giving Cross on September 14. Altogether, Saint Basil's Liturgy is celebrated ten times out of the liturgical year. The Divine Liturgy of Saint James of Jerusalem, celebrated once a year in Jerusalem on the feast day of Saint James, brother of the Lord and first bishop of Jerusalem, to whom this liturgy is traditionally attributed. The Divine Liturgy of the Pre-Sanctified Gifts is used during Great Lent on Wednesdays, Fridays, and a handful of other occasions, and also on the first three days of Holy Week. Nowadays it is always celebrated as a Vesperal Liturgy. The Liturgy of the Faithful has no anaphora. The Holy Gifts having been consecrated and reserved at a previous Divine Liturgy, it is traditionally attributed to Saint Gregory the Dialogist. The Divine Liturgy of Saint Mark was also observed in the Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria on at least that saint's day until fairly recent times. The Hierarchical Liturgy As numbers in a diocese increased dramatically the bishop as presiding over the Eucharistic Assembly appointed presbyters as celebrant in the local community. Still, the Church is understood in Eastern Orthodoxy not in terms of the presbyter, but the diocesan bishop. When the latter is present, he is chief celebrant. Phrases and hymns are also added. The Hierarch commemorates his Hierarch demonstrating unity with the greater Orthodox community. Structure Note Psalms are numbered according to the Greek Septuagint. For the Hebrew Masoretic numbering that is more familiar in the West, usually add 1. The format of Divine Liturgy is fixed, although the specific readings and hymns vary with season and feast. While arrangements may vary from liturgy to liturgy, the Divine Liturgy always consists of three interrelated parts. The Liturgy of Preparation, which includes the entry and vesting prayers of the priests and deacons and the prothesis. 
the liturgy of the catechumens, so-called, because traditionally this is the only part catechumens may attend, and the liturgy of the faithful, so-called, because in ancient times only faithful members in good standing were allowed to participate. In modern times, this restriction applies only to Holy Communion, reception of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. A typical celebration of the Byzantine liturgy consists of liturgy of preparation. This part of the liturgy is private, said only by the priest and deacon. It symbolizes the hidden years of Christ's earthly life. Entrance and vesting prayers. The sacred servers enter the church, venerate the icons and put on their vestments. Liturgy of Preparation The priest and deacon prepare the bread and wine for the Eucharist at the table of oblation. Kairos A preliminary dialogue between the priest and the deacon. Liturgy of the Catechumens This is the public part of the liturgy, where both catechumens and baptized faithful would be in the nave. Opening blessing by the priest he raises the gospel book, making the sign of the cross with it over the altar and proclaiming. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Great Litany, beginning, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. First Antiphon, Little Litany. Second Antiphon, Only Begotten Son, Little Litany. Third Antiphon, Small Entrance, Procession with the Gospel Book. Introit, Troparia and Contacia hymns commemorating specific saints and scriptural events, as appropriate to the liturgical calendar and local custom. Trisogen, the Thrice Holy Hymn, Prochemenon, Epistle Reading, Alleluia, Gospel Reading. Homily homilies may also be preached while communion is being prepared for distribution to the people, and before or after the dismissal. Litany of fervent supplication, let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind. Litany for the departed, this is not said on Sundays, great feasts or during the Paschal season. Litany of the catechumens, and dismissal of the catechumens. Liturgy of the faithful in the early church. Only baptized members who could receive Holy Communion were allowed to attend this portion of the liturgy. In common contemporary practice, with very few local exceptions, all may stay. However, in most places, catechumens are formally dismissed for further study. First Litany of the Faithful Second Litany of the Faithful Cherubicong chanted by the choir as spiritual representatives of the angels. Great Entrance, Procession Taking the Chalice and Discourse from the Table of Oblation to the Altar, Litany of Fervent Supplication, Let Us Complete Our Prayer to the Lord, The Kiss of Peace, Symbol of Faith, Sursum Corda, Anaphora the Sanctus the Eucharistic Canon, Containing the Anamnesis Epiclesis Calling Down the Holy Spirit upon the Holy Gifts to Change Them into the Body and Blood of Christ Commemoration of Saints and Theotokian It is truly meet commemoration of Bishop and Civil Authorities, Remember, O Lord, Litany of Supplication, Having Called to Remembrance All the Saints, Lord's Prayer, Bowing of Heads, Holy things are for the holy. Communion hymn. Holy communion. We have seen the true light. Let our mouths be filled with thy praise, O Lord. Litany of thanksgiving. Prayer behind the ambon. Psalm chapter 33. Dismissal. Note that almost all texts are chanted throughout the divine liturgy, not only hymns but litanies, prayers, Creed confession and even readings from the Bible depending on tradition. In ancient rubrics and contemporary Greek practice, the sermon, Nicene Creed and the Lord's Prayer are spoken, read, rather than chanted. Slavic traditions will chant or sing everything except for the sermon. Gallery of parts of the Eastern Orthodox Liturgy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10. The priest making the little entrance with the gospel book. Priest reading the gospel. Litany of the catechumens. The anti-mention is opened three quarters of the way. The final portion will be unfolded at the petition. That he will reveal unto them the word of truth. The priest and deacons reciting the cherubic hymn before the great entrance. The priest making the great entrance while subdeacon holds censer. 
the priests standing at the holy table after the great entrance, the faithful preparing to receive holy communion. In the foreground are wine and antidor in which the communicants will partake of after receiving the body and blood of Christ. Distributing Holy Communion to the faithful, the priest makes the sign of the cross with the Gospel book over the anti-mention after the latter has been folded, the priest giving the dismissal with the blessing cross.